What up, people? It's your boy, Master Judy, out here with another video. So, one thing that has um, caught my attention, of course, is due to the whole situation, of course, that's happening. As is the, um, is the future of cinema, movie theaters in the United States. And not just the United States, but, you know, in the world. And, you know, people have given their views about what could happen that... Um, the movie industry might be finished, movie theaters might be done. We're seeing what's happening with AMC, um, the current debacle that's going on due to lack of uh, customer, um, due to lack of customer and demand really to see movies at this time because of fear of catching the virus. Understandably so. But I'm of the opinion that movie theaters will not die out, that the pent-up demand will save it. Um, maybe not immediately, but it will make it rebound. You know, others have said otherwise, and they have their proof, and, you know, I'm inclined to agree with it, but I'm here to offer a different different um, approach to it. I've seen this article in the shutdown, A Glimpse of a Life Without Movie Theaters. Most see this as an opportunity for streaming services hastening their unexpected takeover, which is true. People hitting up the Netflix, the Hulus, uh, Disney Pluses and whatnot. And we see right here, though, Jennifer Page jokes that four months in, this decade is already the worst of her life, of course. You know, she's a server at a nearby resort. Um, you know, somebody tested positive at her nursing, mother's nursing home. She moved out two weeks ago. Her father died. No funeral. And, you know, everything has been bad. You know, she's 36. And, but here's the main thing. He said her daughter, her five-year-old daughter, five-year-old daughter, Asked something that coveted by children for more than a century. She was like, Mama, when this is over, can we go to the movies? She went through the whole process of going through the movies. We can get popcorn and have our own drink and eat, each get candy. Now, <laughs> this is exactly, she's echoing pretty much what I wanted to do when I was a kid. I always tell my dad, my mom, or both, hey, can we hit up the movies? I want to go to the movies. Like, I think people need to understand that the movies are still very much ingrained in the culture of this country, and even in the culture, entertainment of other, of other, um, of other countries, you know, people want to get out there. People want to get out there and watch a movie. They just want to go out there and watch them a good movie, you know. And uh, nobody likes to be cooped up just streaming. <laughs> We've always talked about nobody like nobody's nobody got that Netflix and chill uh, mentality all the time. People want to get out there, and you know, enjoy the experience. In a place that's grander. And we get into, like, you know, the coronavirus pandemic is forcing Americans to journey through hardship without some of the reliable comforts and hard times. One of them is movies. For more than a century, movie theaters have been the refuge of com a communal escape. And um, we'll get to, you know, the reason. Well, you can say, you can argue that. Before this, it wasn't becoming a communal escape, more of a chance for people to showcase their certain um, their certain viewpoints, but that's neither here nor there. A place for popcorn shopping, dreaming with your eyes open, transportation away from something else. And to be, f and to be honest, yeah, the movie theater still does that. I mean, you could argue to say that, you know, there needs to be a focus on the plot of a film. It can't all be special effects, but for the most part, people want to see something in a different place. That's not in the comfort of their home at times. Said, and then, you know, they say the world without movie theaters, like the one we're temporarily inhab inhabiting, has long been foretold. It's been predicted with every major technological advancement in media, especially since our advent of streaming. Cinemas so inconveniently located outside the home are a dinosaur, analysts have said. One, uh, one that it's on its way out. Which is true. People are saying that, you know, streaming is taking over. But as we saw in 2018, what's interesting was that there's an article. That showed that revenues were extremely up. People were going to movie theaters. Streaming can only get you so far, especially if production is halted. What can you stream if nothing new is being made? Well, that's just my opinion. So we just see we're getting a glimpse of that. Most see this as an op opening for streaming services, hastening their expected takeover. But it has also brought a renewed appreciation for the pleasures of going to the movies. I clarify and clarify the unique role in social life. Isolation has illuminated the power of sitting together in the dark. You see, people want to go. They want to leave. Like, where's the fun in you just 
you can always watch anything at home. But how many times can you just go out your home and, you know, experience something? Once again, just my opinion. We see that this man right here, John Bell, who's president of Tampa Theater in 1920s era movie palace. Mm. It's like, it's one of those things you can't really appreciate something until it's taken away from you. Exactly. This has certainly accelerated a dystopian future. Look at what the landscape could look like. But I just innately believe that humans are social creatures, and ultimately, they'll want to gather again. Streaming is great. It's convenient. But it's not the same. Exactly. It's not the same. Unless you got yourself the greatest home theater set up, you've got it all with the couches and the lightings and everything like that, you know, it ain't the same. Like, you're not getting a better experience than me streaming the same thing on my laptop. But, you know, we can always talk about it. Nearly a month of a sheltered place orders that forced some um, to hanker for, the stick, hanker for the sticky floors of cinemas like never before. Sure, those people texting a few seats were always a nuisance, and the films weren't always so great. But peruse social media lists of what am I going to do when this is over, and you'll see countless cravings for the big screen and a tub of popcorn. True. Maybe at those lower prices, though, you know. That's one thing, before I get to my main point, if movie theaters really want to bring back a lot of people, you got to start cutting down prices at your concessions. Like, trust me, you'll make a lot of money anyway. <laughs> you don't need to keep them at current prices. People want to go, better attract them with what you can, and that's cheap snacks. So anyway, being holed up at home, for some, made the difference between streaming and movie going especially acute. Neither Tiger King, and, and I'm not entertaining that. I, I, I think it's a weird <laughs> Tiger King. I, I don't know. I don't care about what it is. Nor the bite-sized movie and chapters of Quibi feel the loss of a night at the movies. Exactly, man. You wanna Imagine you going out with your girl, and you just say, hey, let's go up to my place and just now fix it chill. That can work. But sometimes you want to say, like, hey, yo, let's, let, let's hit up this movie. Sometimes you all want to be out of each other's homes, you know? That's just me. So, Gary Walker, 22 years old in San Jose, California, who's studying film at San Francisco State University, has been filling his time watching documentaries on Netflix and series on Disney+, Plus, but it doesn't do the trick. I can't wait to go back, says Walker. I'm just a person who really likes the social experience of going to the movies, not sitting at home watching a movie by myself. Don't get me wrong, I like doing that too, but it's really different, sitting in a theater with other people. And it really is, like... I don't think I really could have appreciated um, Ready Player One, which was one of my favorite movies in 2018, if I just streamed it at home. Like, I never got to... I regret not seeing 1917 in films, but I think I would have enjoyed it greatly in the movie theater. I watched Sonic uh, this year before everything got shut down. And, you know, just seeing kids laugh and people, you know, chuckling that you wouldn't normally interact with at a movie that you like... Is very nice. You know what I'm saying? And theaters nationwide have shut it indefinitely due to the pandemic, leaving about a dozen still open. Most are drive-ins, hmm, which have seen a sudden resurgence after a decades-long slide. So who knows? This could be the future of movie theaters going back retro. Chains are furloughed or laid off employees, many of whom are part-time and hourly workers. And I know how that is. I used to work in a movie theater. And so I'm wishing um, all those who are working in the movie theaters, you know, hope they're doing well. And I hope they can find some financial solace during these hard times. And as we see, the shutdown will almost certainly lead to the permanent closure of some cinemas. Analysts say that AMC Entertainment, which presides over the nation's largest chain, is on the cusp of bankruptcy. So whether the store and theater owners, like many other businesses, have sought federal aid through the coronavirus stimulus package. Of course, the earliest most theaters are hoping to reopen is June. All major releases have been postponed up until mid-July. So, you know, this is the point they're looking for. We'll see what happens. The ability, when this is done, to go out and enjoy something entertaining and affordable, keyword being affordable, <laughs> with your family and friends, is going to be hugely important to the cultural and psychological fabric of the country. I agree, says president of the National Organization of theater owners, John Fithian. We want to do that, but we still need to be viable. Movie going has been waning for two decades, a decline masked by higher ticket prices. Last year, domestic ticket sales surpassed $11.4 billion. 
That revenue is a big reason why all but a handful of the largest upcoming productions have postponed theatrical release rather than head to streaming. The big money is still at the box office. Major statement. No one expects whenever movie theaters do open that the masses will stream to the doors. I will admit, I'll have to accept that. Distancing protocols will still be kept in place, of course, so long as there is in the vaccine. Of course, people will not will be hesitant to you know crowd around. Last month, the analytics company Edo polled moviegoers about a 70% said they were likely to return to the cinemas. Some 45 said they would wait a few weeks. 11% they say months. So the majority want to go back immediately. Because when you're a cinema buff or you like the movies, you want to make sure that the first thing you hit up is a movie theater, I'm just saying. Theater shuttered in the Spanish flu pandemic of 1918. But in a more patchwork fashion, the establishment of the studio system that followed the 1920s period recounted by Hollywood historian William Mann in Tinseltown, all of that, never least this pandemic will likewise shape, reshape the movie business. If out of this comes a renewed appreciation for going back to the same, to some glamour, maybe in the movies, movie theaters will find their way. Movie theater chains might be wise to come out of this with a whole new way of, hey, look what we have to offer. We can make this experience really special. Exactly. <coughs> Excuse me. As the pandemic continues, of course, larger streaming units are just growing. Of course, viewership is soaring. Viewing parties, digital fa- fast and mail of community movie goers are increasing. Some theaters have even themselves embraced streaming as a band aid to set up the virtual screening online. But none of those options, all of which comes with a pause button, provide what many right now could use most: an escape. And I believe that this is huge. But let's get to another person, a professional. We see um, um, Debbie Stanford Kristen pretty much said that, you know, World Black Closure of Cinemas is like a huge wake and battle, huge waking battle. This is going to be hard. Um, you know, the fact that cinemas and moviegoers have proven over the years to be nothing short of super resilient. You know, when TV first arrived and passed into people's homes, many predicted the days of outings to the big screen were over. They were proved wrong, true. Later, when the perceived threat of cinema goes came from videos and DVDs, again, the doom mongers were at work predicting the defiance of the movie theater. As people rushed to buy or rent consent, like, yes, again, you know, pretty much he's saying that, look, TV, it ain't kill the movie theater. Movie theater business. Blockbuster Hollywood video, they didn't kill the movie theater business. DVDs, they didn't kill the movie theater business. And so far, streaming before this wasn't really killing the movie theater business. To the fact that even some streamings were putting their stuff into movie theaters. Um, And she pretty much said that you know, movie industry did not ignore these threats, but they were like, you know, we're good. And now we see that then now comes the supposed threat of streaming service. Again, we are not ignoring the impact of streaming figures that show that worldwide, just for one weekend, the COVID-19 shutdown streaming services subscriptions jumped 13%. Streaming is popular, and the cinema industry must continue to invest and innovate to maintain and build its own popularity. Streaming popularity, however, does not mean people will be less inclined to go to the cinemas once the crisis is over. In fact, a recent study from... EY's Quantitative Economics and Statistic Group quest found that people who go to the movies also more frequently watch more streaming content than those who go to the cinemas less often. So that pretty much says that, hey, yeah, I'm getting this Netflix subscription or to be more um, to be more apt, yeah, I'm getting this HBO Max, this Disney Plus, this Hulu and whatnot, but I'm still going to go to the movies anyway. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know, they say that the study, for instance, so that those who visited a cinema nine times or more in the past year consume more streaming content than those who visited only once or twice. So those who really like the movies are still going to go. Streaming is not going to kill the demand for those who have an insatiable appetite to see things in the movie theater. And I can agree with the amount of people who have seen review films, who have kids on YouTube. I'm pretty sure that if they get the chance and want to go to the movies, they're going to go to it. And as she says, cinema will survive, indeed thrive. In the post-COVID-19 era, as people look to get the most out of the freedom and opportunities to get out and socialize, which is true. Like the, I, the, e, the EY Quest survey demonstrated cinema going as a favorite among teenagers. So young people <laughs> are going to the to the theaters. No, uh, that, why does that not surprise me? It's only been the trend for decades. <laughs> 
Those who responded to the survey were age 13 to 17, Gen Z, <clears throat> reported going to an average of 7.3 movies a year while consuming 9.2 hours of streaming content. These guys are going to the movies more than I do, or as much as I do, <laughs> when I can on a good day or a good year, or if I like anything, or if there are enough good movies around. They're just, just watching anything. <laughs> Post-crisis, those much anticipated movie releases that were put on hold will flood the cinemas. Of course, man. People want to see that Wonder Woman. People want to see that Black Widow, you know? People want to see these movies, man. They're ready. No time to die, even though that's gonna have its uh it's gonna have its issues. But yeah, all the kids' movies are coming out and I am not hyped for this because they're too much fast and furious. But um you know she basically says that they are confident that the movie industry will rise. And of, co and of course, you know, there'll be more to choose from, which I'll get to in my conclusion and whatnot. And finally, let me hit up the Reuters, where they pretty much say that, hey, U.S. movie theater operators are aiming for a late summer blockbuster season. So they're already feeling confident you know, U.S. movie theater operators were forced to shut their doors, as we all know, in late March to slow the coronavirus spread. And are aiming to welcome back crowds across the country by late July for a belated kickoff to the summer movie season. What a time to come back, as we can see. Ahead of that, operators are considering a transition period when they might, when when they open some parts in the United States where the novel coronavirus outbreak is receding. That could start. As early as mid-June, says Patrick Cor Corcoran, spokesman for the National Association of, the of Theater Owners, though he called any timeline very tentative, of course. The timing will depend on the guidance of the health authorities. As we can see, and one of the challenges theaters face are making sure field goers, film goers feel comfortable, of course. That's important. Expect the blockbusters such as Walt Disney's Mulan, Wonder Woman, 1984, from AT&T's Warner Brothers are currently scheduled for late July and August. There are two schools of thought, Corcoran said. People will be very tense, careful, and nervous, or people will just be destined to get out of the house. It's going to be probably a mixture, which is, real, which is realistic. During their first weeks back in business, theaters will likely show classic movies or films that were playing in March when theaters went dark, which could prove interesting for a couple of films, specifically one that wants to make back its... Uh, wants to make back its uh, dignity, <laughs> which would be cool. That could be reviving historical musicals such as Grease or running a marathon of Back to the Future or Harry Potter movies, says Brock Baxby, executive vice president of Missouri-based theaters BNB Theaters, which operates 400 screens in seven states. Executives are brainstorming ways to draw audiences, such as staging a costume contest around a Harry Potter film or serving butterbeer, Potter's favorite beverage. Not an agenda, not on the agenda are sad or very heavy dramas. True. We want movies to bring back joy to people. That's true. Operators <laughs> are also debating how visible to be with these steps. So, you know, when you want to do sub subly or whatnot. As we can see, though, <clears throat> during the shutdown theater chains, you know, they had to operate, had to be, you know, cautious on how to open up there. Theater owners, as they say, likely will look to restaurants and bars for clues on how people are reacting. Because, you know, first thing people want to do when they eat out, want to grab a beer at the bar, do what they want to do. You know what I mean? So this is going to probably be very strategic. Paramount will release the SpongeBob movie on the run. August 7th, you got all the kids who just want to be out there. Because I tell you now, all the kids cooped up at home are going to bug their parents Say, I want to go out. I want to go out. I want to go out to a movie. The teenagers will be like, hey, man, I want to go out, mom. Let's hit it up. Or if they got cars, they'll be like, hey, yo, I'm a dip. And hit up the movie theaters. People my age in their 20s will be like, yo, let me just go out. Let me see what's happening. You got the movie buffs who'll be like, yeah, I want to go out, you know, get myself back in the rhythm. That's all there is to do it. We see here in China, the world's second largest movie market, authorities reopened theaters in March, but of course we all know they shut them down two weeks without explanation. 
if there's a great uncertainty in major parts of the world, I think there's going to be issues opening major films, which is the case. So, let me put it like this. So, what do I have to say? The movie theater industry is not going to die. I think that, well, depending on how it is, but I am of the opinion that the movie theater industry is not going to die. As they said, people just, it's not the same thing as streaming, does not replace the the allure or the experience a movie theater will provide when you're in the theater. Kids and young people clearly want to get out of the house and want to be out there. I'm young myself, and I want to get out of the house <laughs> completely. You know, people want to be out there. People want to see other people. People want to, you know, be in an ambiance, and your home can only provide so much ambiance, <laughs> you know? Number three, those blockbusters, that pent-up demand. People want to see stuff. People want to see the new stuff. And, you know, you can't get that thing like that. We all know that Hollywood knows, and we're all smart enough to know that if you are in the house and you'll be like, oh, yo, this blockbuster's coming up, you're not going to be like, eh, I could see it a couple months down. You know how bad for business that is when you can delay the inevitable? But if you, if it's, if something is released in the movie theater, you'd be like, okay, bet I got a timeline to want to see this first, second weekend, and let me see it. So it's all like that. Now then, the movie industry does have to do a couple of things that they did mention in those three articles that I mentioned. One, you've got to make the people feel comfortable. Of course, you got to make sure it's healthy. you got to desanitize everything. you got to do that. Number two, you got to wow the people. you got to make sure they say, yo, we're here, we're ready, and we want you to have a good time in the movie theaters. Okay? you got to wow them. Now we get to the main thing. you got all this pent-up demand. Let's do simple economics, you know. When you increase demand, you know, um, how should I say this? No. Yes. The higher the price, the less the demand. You see that demand, and you're going to be like, movie theaters got to realize that, hey, why don't we cut these prices down? Okay. How about, you know, let me, let me make it um, mathematically wise. So, an adult ticket that's non matinee is thirteen fifty. How about you do like this, yo? How about we charge eight bucks and fi- and fifty cents for this ticket, right, for the weekend? And then on Tuesdays, you know, when we have our little type of deals, we cut that in half for four dollars and twenty five cents a ticket. I guarantee you, people will be flocking. People will be buying. It, it, people will be buying. Understand that you want to make revenue, you want to make money, but you got to take what you can get. So theaters not only have to reduce ticket prices, but they got to go at them concessions, man, because let me tell you, nobody, even though people will be like, yeah, I'd like to take a break from cooking for a while. They ain't going to be opening up their wallets for like for like a $10 popcorn. They're going to be like, hey, I'll help me help you. How about you lower them prices and I'll open that wallet for you. I might even buy more than I usually do. So, yeah, that's what I think. Movie industry will be alive, but the movie industry has to take steps to ensure that it can be viable, as it was mentioned um, in the Movie Pro article that I had and a little bit in that NBC article that I showed. So I think that's it. Thank y'all for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. Hit the bell for the notification notifications to make sure you're notified. Once again, I do these videos for you people, you the people, because I want to discuss these topics and get your views on them. Please feel free to uh, comment on the article. Am I wrong? Am I right? What do you think needs to happen? Um, what are your opinions? So thank y'all for watching, and I should have more videos up when I can. Peace.